Hallöchen, everybody. Welcome to part number two. Uh, watching behind the secret magic hands of Gerald. <laughs> Hello, Gerald. Uh, how are Hello. you again? Uh, it's stupid to ask you the question again because we do it anyway in one recording. Yeah, but... Run and swap <laughs> t-shirts or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you have been here for okay. part one. Uh, part one. If you missed the part one, uh, just head back to our uh, YouTube channel, or you're already on the YouTube channel, but to the other video. I will link it uh, somewhere here, uh, top left, right, whatever. Uh, there you can see part one. And today we are now in part two, and the voice or the sound at least should be now perfect. So. Um, we go straight into part number two. We have now the high poly polygon model, low polygon model. And uh, now we, let's say, start with the painting, with the advanced yeah. Photoshop, as you said. Yeah, so where we left off is basically, we just an introduction to the low poly and the high poly that we made in. Mm -hmm or didn't make, but I showed off in 3D Studio Max. Now, uh, as I said, we have a tool now. This is the one I use. It's a uh, Substance Painter. Yeah. And what you do is that you import the 3D object that you made. So this is the low poly model. Yeah. That's been imported here. And uh as we mentioned like in the last video we want to try and transfer the the details from the high poly over to the low poly model mm -hmm. and we do that by something called texture baking i'm not sure you've probably heard about that before right like yeah ba yeah baking ao maps ambient occlusion yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah 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 so what we but do, by the way, if you, if it was yeah. too fast for you guys outside and you know only cookies baking, uh, then uh, or some other different kind of uh, good pies, etc. Um, yeah. Let me ask uh, or let you ask um, Joe in the comments down below. So anyway, yeah, yeah. continue. Yeah, we, we can we can discuss yeah. like a little bit more what the different maps is. But basically, baking when we talk about texture baking is that you you want to try and reduce the workload of the of the computer in the game. Mm -hmm. So you basically pre-calculate a lot of data mm -hmm. and you save it into the textures. So it means that you're reducing the workload uh, on, on the on the game engine by just doing the calculation beforehand. Um, so yeah, in this case, we have the we have the low poly here and I've also imported my my high poly model. And this is going to look a little bit strange. You can see that you have like a it's basically a cage around it so that's yeah, just yeah, telling like a, me uh, yeah it's just telling me like if if something is wrong if you know if if something was red there it would basically tell me that i need to go and adjust the cage let's see um here you can see all right so yeah, yeah because so it's touching means, each it, other uh, yeah it's cutting into it so it's not going to be able yeah. to capture any data of this this part here mm -hmm. so um yeah so now we're going to start baking our textures. So now you can see that our low poly looks a lot more interesting than what it did yeah. previously. So because it has, let's yeah. say, kind of lighting, lightning on it with, with shadows, uh, etc. What is... Yeah, so you have, if I go into just the base color now, you can see there's mm. nothing here. Yeah. There's nothing. But yeah. If I swap to uh, the ambient occlusion, you can see that ah, it, it yeah. is basically calculated the soft shadows. And that's just mm -hmm. whenever you see areas here where things are really close to each other. Then it's dark. Yeah. It, it darkens it a little bit, right? And in here, where it's basically almost covered, right? It's uh, fairly dark, right? So it, it creates a fairly good looking um, so, so this is or whatever you want to call it, yeah. Okay. yeah. So this is down now by the, let's say, advanced Photoshop. And before you had to kind of those things, let's say shadows in the texture itself, right? Previously, you would usually bake this in the 3D software, but now it's it's a little bit more streamlined, right? Because you can do everything inside of one, uh, inside of one pro program, uh, yeah, like yeah. Substance Painter, yeah. And then, now that you have baked this, you would start by adding materials to this. So in substance, it's, it's sort of like a drag and drop. So you can just drag and drop 
this one in here. Whoa. Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's gonna. This is something called a smart material. So it's gonna try and add like you know this rust spots and a little bit of dirt and all of that. It's gonna try and add some of it automatically based on the maps that we baked. So the it's gonna use uh -huh. like the AO map and like yeah, thickness yeah, yeah. and all of that. Yeah. So you usually you start with a material like this and you can then go into it and open it up here. You can see we have multiple uh -huh. layers. And Stretch, edge damage, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So you could, yeah. let's say I don't want to have any rust here, right? You could go in and remove that, for example. Uh, and but but how it's mapped, it's it's because it's calculated where the, the spots appear and not, right? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's, it calculates that if I go into here, you can actually see, well, this one didn't do that. But for the edge damage... Um, because it's doing it only on the edge, right? Yeah, yeah you can see here, it's yeah. along the edge here. So it's using, if I go in here, you can see this is the mass that ah. it, uh, it calculates yeah, yeah. using the, the different maps that we have, right? And okay. you can then go in here and you can actually go and, you know, adjust this, tweak. Uh, all right that's okay because i was not yeah. sure as you said in the first but it's advanced photoshop because i thought there <laughs> will be some photoshop users who will say photoshop is the best outside there but now i know yeah. what you mean of course yeah like it's it, like i said it's called a smart material so it has like a lot of these you know parameters that you can go in and, yeah. and adjust and you can of course add your own uh customize etc yeah okay. you can customize it to whatever you whatever you want and you would then also go in because I'm not going to have everything here isn't going to be metal, right? I have this glass yeah. thing at the top. I have these, you know, the, the, the latch, the, this yeah. part here, latch that would be like a yeah. clear metal and so on. So you would go in and mask the different areas. Basically what you would do is you would add a mask to this mm -hmm. and you can then go in and select the areas, right? That you want to have. So in this case, I'm actually also going to go in here. Ah, okay. So you can you can go also yeah, you this, can also this, look uh, at the at right. the flat map right of the whole thing. You can go in all right. And just paint. Because that would be my question: if you can only um, select the whole segment, or yeah, the, or, 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 or like you did in the in the let's say two D view, the yeah. or, the own uh, sites, let's say yeah, yeah, or a polygon, yeah you can go in. You, can, yeah. you have also have the selection thing here. In this case, ah, okay. this one would also basically just take everything, Model. right? Uh, okay. While this one is only All the... right. So, um, uh, yeah. Now, so like I said, you would then mask out the different parts. Uh, you would apply, let's say a different, you know, uh, let's say I want to have like a, a steel. Ah, okay, so Texture. you say what kind of material it is. Yeah, so you have, let's see here. I think it's this one. That's fast. I mean, I like it. Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, okay, now it's the only, or clear, bare metal, whatever. Yeah. Mm. And here you use, of course, your reference picture. So you see, okay, this is, yeah. let's say, plastic, this is whatever, blue, red, yeah, yeah. etc., glass, okay. So like what you want to try and get down first is that you have the, like you said, the basic material properties, correct? So you mm -hmm. want to have the plastic wherever there's plastic and your metal wherever there's metal and so on. So you just, um, uh, yeah. Now, uh, after that's done, you would then start to, you know, adjust the colors and so on. And in the end, you would like you can see here, this is one that I've worked more with, right? It's, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it's the same. You can see it's almost the same layout. You have the base color. You have, uh, I have a, a, a color here that's a little bit brighter mm -hmm. that, uh, that's applied somewhere where there's been a little bit of like, you know, you get the fading from the sun, you know, the sun. Yeah. 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 And so yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The color grays out from, from the sun, from, from, from time being there. Yeah. 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 Uh, and you add like dirt layers and you add, use the, 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 the pre-rendered maps to define where you want the dirt to be. You can also actually go in as well and you can add a paint layer here, for example, and I can, uh, 
I don't have my tablet here, so I I do it not usually with a pencil and tablet or whatever. Uh, yeah, it, whenever I do like right. hand painting, it's you usually yeah. wanna, I, at least I want to use like a tablet because I'm terrible at just drawing with the with the mouse. But you can see you can go in. Yeah. And okay. Perfect. Masking but... areas. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because so I it's... mean, the dirt is, let's say, randomly, more or less, yeah, randomly mm -hmm. controlled, randomly generated by yeah. uh, defined uh, specific settings. But mm -hmm. if you want to have something on a specific place, because it's very, um, you need to have it there. Because on, if you look on the real, let's say, yeah. for example, a gate, yeah, and there is kind of scratch in it or whatever, yeah, and it's mm -hmm. everybody knows it. So you can still add kind of manual stuff in it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I basically, yeah. if here for the Photoshop users here, hello, uh, you do uh, what a layer is, yeah? Um, mm. and then on the layer you can add again, again effects, etc. What you did here, what I see uh, on on this on this part. So you do, let's say, again on this specific layer, a specific color, specific if you would like scratch mark, whatever, whatever, whatever. So you can add that on top, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like you said, you're not going to get stuff like this from the. Uh, from the auto generation like uh, like for the dirt so this is the kind of stuff you would need to go in and you know add uh, add yourself the bottom part yeah the various different you know material types so you have the bottom like you said we have the steel for the yeah Lines and glass at the top all right wow all right. and then you have an object that looks pretty i think it looks Okay, -ish. yeah, it looks good. Uh, <laughs> I mean, for so for yeah. taxiway edge lights, uh, it looks very good. Yeah, so, I mean, okay, that's that's texturing, right? Okay, so I got it. So now, the, the, let's say the model is, would you say, finished like it is now in in terms of modeling texturing? Yeah, yeah. There are two questions uh, we can well, I have for the moment. Is um, one thing is you said okay, it depends if you're close or far away, far away more far away from the from the object. Um, mm -hmm. How many details are shown? Um, is that also a setting you have to prepare here in terms of okay, make different models for this different let's say zoom levels, or how does it work? Yeah, so you would do that in in 3D Studio Max is where you would do the. Uh, or in Blender, if you use Blender for three D modeling, so that's where you would create the different uh, LODs, so the different L level of details for the for the model. Of course, as you can see, the software is super easy. You need to just click somewhere yeah. randomly, yeah, yeah, and yeah, things yeah. happen. <laughs> yeah, it's super easy. Right, yeah. and then so let's say this is the the high detail one that I uh, I'm happy with. Yeah. Right? So what you can do then is. You would make a clone of it. Now, mm -hmm. like I said, you want to go in and delete like this kind of nonsense, right? Because it's not going to be visible when you're far away. So it, that's like the basic, you would go in and you would just remove like here as well. I would also remove like the, the screw and you know, this one. Those little this stuff. Things, yeah, all uh, the small stuff. And then, you know, crunch huh? it down with a with a pro optimizer uh, uh yeah this one here Ooh. all right so once uh before we continue the model is finished all right so mm -hmm. Let's say in basic, uh, in terms of uh, what the flight simulator has to handle, because uh, let's say taxiway edge light is probably on an airport thousands times. Yeah. 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 Um, so um, is there any kind of, let's say, what does my computer with this object? It's loading only so, one time and then repeating it, or is it yeah, loading so, it a thousand times? So lights in, in uh, MSFS, usually what we use is something called a light rogue. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's what you do is you define like a, you basically define a line in the scene editor. And you say that along that line, you want to place a light every so and so meters. So every five meters, you want to have a light. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how to explain it in a, in a, Simply. Yeah, I know. I, I, yeah. I, what I understand is you it, it places the let's say the first line and knows on this heading every whatever meters yeah. repeat this. Yeah, yeah. So um, and then again, right? It's this lamp here. As soon as you're from like uh, 
pretty or not at, you're not far away from it right but when you get at a specific distance it's simply just going to unload the object and remove it so ah, yeah, okay that, that's that's like, the more familiar yeah. thing I, I i i'm familiar with let's say talking about lod's yeah that yeah. some scenery objects are which are really far away you don't see them they just disappear yeah. and yeah, so it depends and it, it depends on, uh, on, on, sorry for interrupting you here, but uh, is, let's say how good the developer was that sometimes you recognize it by popping up and sometimes not. Yeah, so. yeah, so the LOD popping, yeah. Now, yeah. The, uh, uh, when an object is unloaded, like from the, from the view, so when it disappears, that's a hard-coded limit in, in MSFS. Ah, okay. And that's going to happen when it's at 0.5, percent of the screen so when it covers that part of the screen if it's any less than that it's going to just be unloaded right it's not going to be rendered all right ah, okay yeah now for like like what you said where you have like the pop like this one to this one right for example yeah yeah so that's something we can control as like uh, how far away do we want it to be before we swap to this one so you would, wouldn't want to do that here, right? For example, it would be yeah. a very, uh, very visible transition between the two. So that's something you yeah. can, the developer goes in and try and fine tune. Uh, and while also, you know, keeping performance in mind, you want to try and, you know, uh, reduce the detail as soon as possible. So it's something you All go right. in and you need to basically do like a visual check of the model uh, in the sim to get the yeah let's say you give this one a value of 20. yeah that means that all the way down to 20 this one is going to be displayed mm -hmm. so whenever this one transitions from covering 20 percent of the screen to 19 it's going to swap to this one mm -hmm. and then so on and so on and so on until you hit uh 0 0.5 so it then it's disappearing anyway. Okay. And then it's just going to be removed. So the, the, the lower limit, the 0 0.5 limit, is not something that you can control as a developer. Okay. So, um, I mean, one little, or maybe one last thing is, uh, I don't know if, you, if, you, if it's planned to, because uh, I said oh, it was really, let's say, not spontaneous, but I said, mm. show me would like to show. But the thing is, is there any chance that we can see, let's say, adding light to it, that it's light, or is it... Yeah, impossible uh, now. No, it's not impossible. Uh, we would need to do that in the sim. So we have part three coming up, <laughs> because if I see if, if I see the clock, it's it's a perfect timing. So um, once uh, Joe is now starting his sim, um, and he shows us maybe if it's working, I don't know a little bit of yeah, this kind of stuff to let's see how it looks like in the sim. So tune in for step, no step, not step three for ver version, no also not version for part three. That's it, what I wanted to say. <laughs> so thank you for watching for the moment. Like, subscribe, thumbs up. And uh, let us know in the comments uh, below if you like this kind of, let's say, um, development background, what kind of magic Joe is able to do stuff. So um, thanks for watching and see you in part number three.